The Congress leaders Priyanka Gandhi Vadra and Malik Arjuna Kharge on Sunday flipped the BJP's pitch against Rahul Gandhi saying that it was Prime Minister Modi who has led the BJP's caustic attacks against the Gandhi family who have insulted Rahul Gandhi's Kashmiri Pandit lineage calling Rahul Gandhi the son of a martyr his sister Priyanka Gandhi Vadra said the BJP insulted him every day not even sparing the Nehru Gandhi family as the Congress held a day long demonstration across the country to protest his disqualification from the lok sabha with her asking why no cases against the prime minister what shaheed pita ka apman hari sansan sansan mein kiya jata hai theek hai theek hai us shaheed ke bete ko aap desh drohi kehte hain aap meer jafar kehte hain aapke mantri मेरी मां का अपमान भरी संसद में करते हैं आपके एक मुख्यमंत्री कहते हैं कि राहुल गांधी को पता भी नहीं है कि उनका पिता कौन है आपके प्रधानमंत्री भरी संसद में खड़े होकर कहते हैं कि ये परिवार नेहरू नाम को इस्तेमाल क्यों नहीं करता पूरे परिवार का अपमान करते हैं कश्मीरी पंडित समाज के रिवाज का अपमान करते हैं जिसके तहत एक बेटा अपने बाप के मरने पर पगड़ी पहनता है परिवार की परंपरा को आगे बढ़ाता है लेकिन आप पर कोई मुकदमा नहीं होता So the opposition has come together to slam the government on Rahul Gandhi's disqualification we're asking on left right and center a new found dynamic in the opposition thanks to the BJP has the disqualification backfired And joining us now on left, right, and centre is a senior Congress leader, member of Parliament, uh, Shashi Tharoor. Thank you for your time, Mr. Tharoor. First and foremost, the BJP's pitch against Rahul Gandhi is that he has insulted an entire community, that his remarks from 2019, which led to his defamation conviction and his Parliament disqualification, is an insult. They say to um, OB to an OBC community. Your response to that charge first. Well, that charge is preposterous, Sarah, because no one imagines that Lalit Modi and Nirav Modi, two of the three Modis he mentioned in that offending speech, are anything remotely that qualifies as backward. First of all, they're not backward by caste. Secondly, they're not backward in their own levels of income and lifestyle. They're living luxurious exiles in London. I think it's preposterous to say that these two people who have uh taken their real gotten gains uh, into fugitive status in a foreign land and are living in the lap of luxury to say that pointing that out is an assault on obcs stretches common sense to the breaking point sarah it makes absolutely no sense to say that what is more in rahul gandhi's remarks he specifically said in sub ke naam pe in sub being these three names it was these three people that he was specifically referring to he was not by any means suggesting that all modis are thieves or all thieves are modis or anything like that <coughs> he was pointing specifically to these three individuals uh, two of whom at the very least don't qualify for the designation of obc or any kind of bc so let's 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 say really say that that defense by the bjp is preposterous but in the end it all boils down to political narrative and which one will right. stick and dirty politics so let me ask you we have a combative rahul gandhi and yesterday he hit out at the prime minister over his disqualification and you know clever swipe use the savarkar reference to answer as to why he doesn't apologize over uh, his remarks in london but mr thru legally this is uh, quite a setback isn't it because this could bar him from contesting for 8 years unless well, the higher court overrules it it, it it is in this initial stage a setback but the fact of the matter is that indeed an appeal uh is permitted for the next 30 days uh, he's been given uh, to appeal and the appeal will take place i'm sure much faster the appeal will will certainly request uh, a stay of the conviction so i'm hoping that we can prevent uh, though that worst outcome from happening uh I, we have good lawyers we believe that the complainant has a very weak case um as i said the actual statement uh, lends itself at the very least to a more innocent interpretation 
that specifically reduces it to those three people so that a fourth Modi, Mr. Putnesh Modi, the complainant, uh, cannot possibly demonstrate that he was targeted in any way, shape or form. Um, and, and therefore, I think it's entirely possible for us to be able to win a stay of that conviction pending a more detailed appeal in the High so Court. So, is, so, just to say that, so that's the first thing, that it is bad news, but that bad news can be tackled before it becomes uh, fully operative as bad news. But the second thing is also that it's been good news. There's been a silver lining to this cloud, Sarah, and that's come in the form of uh, an unexpected and indeed unprecedented level of opposition unity. We've seen, for example, regional parties in the opposition that in each of their states have regarded Congress as a principal opponent, uh, actually come right out and, and, and stand by our side. You've seen Mr. Kejriwal in Delhi, Mamta Banerjee in Bengal, K. Chandrasekhar Rao in Hyderabad. Uh, these are not figures who have in the past been willing to associate themselves in any way with the Congress or be on, on the same platform as the Congress in recent years, and they have come out and said they are there with us. So that opposition unity could actually turn out to be uh, exhibit number one in the law of unintended consequences of the BJP's action. It could still boomerang on that. So according to you, this is a self-goal by the BJP. And I'll get to the opposition unity uh, aspect of this. I just want to carry on a little more about whether there's going to be legal recourse or moral high ground, which is what we're seeing out of the Congress right now. The court had granted bail, suspended the sentence for 30 days, allowing a chance to appeal to a higher court. So the Congress will be appealing because the BJP yesterday also, Ravi Shankar Prasad, was uh, trying to imply uh, that you are on a weak wicket which is why we haven't seen an immediate uh, appeal being filed. Well, look, I'm not a lawyer to begin with. I'm not one of the Congress legal team, so I can't tell you uh, whether an appeal is to be filed and exactly when it's going to be filed. You all saw and heard a very combative and defiant Rahul Gandhi who said he doesn't even care if he goes to jail. He doesn't care if they bar him for life from Parliament. So, I mean, I, I hope that was not a hint that he won't appeal because as a Kerala MP myself, let me say that it would be unfair to the people of Vienna to deny them the representation True. of the MP they voted to with such a major uh, massive majority. So I hope that there will be an appeal and I hope it will be heard fairly expeditiously. I mean, the important thing is that there are lots of precedents uh, for uh, this sort of uh, matter being appealed. What is shocking is there's almost no precedent for the maximum sentence being given uh, for an offense like this, which consists of one sentence in a much larger campaign speech in a political culture where campaign speeches involve far, far worse abuse, much of it perpetrated by the BJP. I've been at the receiving end of far worse than this one sentence of Mr. Gandhi's in my last three elections. And I think uh, it's fair to say that some of those who are most self-righteously protesting Mr. Gandhi's words have said far worse themselves in their election campaigns. You know, let's face it, our Absolutely. politics is not exactly a, a, a sort of a, a kid gloves kind of game. Uh, we've heard some stuff from very high-placed ministers and even the Prime Minister on the political hustings. So to have a two-year sentence, which by the way is the maximum permissible sentence for this kind of statement, strikes me as, uh, as somewhat unusual. And that too, I think, suggests that we're not on a weak wicket. It's in fact the complainant who's on a weak wicket and the BJP, if they're enthusiastically supporting him, because the fact is that, um, that he has a weak case. He's managed to persuade one judge. Mm. In fact, the, the earlier judge in the same case had made remarks that suggested he didn't think there was much of a case. Then mm. the new judge came and he's given a very different judgment. There's every reason to believe that a high court judge would look at the matter with a fresh pair of eyes and see it our way. So, again, Rahul Gandhi, the Congress being very defiant, uh, making lemonade out of these lemons. But, uh, and you, Rahul Gandhi has updated his uh, bio on his Twitter account, replaced member of parliament with disqualified MP. Um, yeah. But have you been cornered? And ironically, it's, you know, Rahul Gandhi's own brash act of tearing up the UPA ordinance that would have actually allowed a convicted MP to continue until all appeals were disposed of must be haunting the Congress now. Well, I think in that particular instance, Rahul Gandhi has never disavowed the standard principle that he took. So I don't think that that's, that's a, a matter we want to revisit. I would say very simply that as far as the law is concerned, uh, the law has every right to operate, and, and I don't think Rahul Gandhi or anybody in the Congress wants Rahul Gandhi to be above the law. But we want the law to operate fairly, and what's more, in our democracy, we want a level playing field. Yes. You know, we're used to a democracy in which uh, opposition leaders are treated with respect by the government, and indeed it's our duty to treat the government and its ministers with respect as well. That's how mm -hmm. democracies function. 
Uh, you can't have this kind of take no prisoners, holds no barred, uh, gloves off, bare knuckles uh, uh, assaults going on uh, on each other because it's bad for the country. But equally important, let me say to you, Sarah, is this is bad for democracy. Put Rahul Gandhi aside for a minute, put his statement aside, put the Congress party aside for a minute. Just ask one simple question. Can it be good for democracy that the principal leader of the main opposition party is either locked up or not allowed to speak in parliament or both? Or even if it's not the principal leader, you can say a principal leader of any opposition party, I'm willing to have that too. Would that be good? <clears throat> to my mind, if we care about Indian democracy, every concerned Indian will say this has gone too far. Yes, a so sitting MP not allowed to speak in Parliament, disqualified without a chance to appeal. What does this say about our democratic uh, institutions? That's the big question. But Mr. Tharoor, the fact is we are uh, unfortunately in a place where we have uh, political parties where the, the, the policy really seems to be take no prisoners, uh, all gloves are off. What do you do? when you're then pushed up against a wall uh, in this, because what, he, what is the Congress going to do? What if the election commission announces a special election for the Vaidnath seat? Well, we do have an encouraging precedent. The election commission did that in the case of the Lakshadweep seat when uh, Mohammed Faisal was convicted. He went to uh, the High Court, got a stay of conviction, and two days before the by-election would have taken place, the election yes. commission countermanded. So even if the election commission acts with unseemly haste, as the Lok Sabha Secretariat seemed to have done on a Friday within 24 hours uh, of, of this judgment. On a Friday afternoon, we see this disqualification being announced. Um, when everyone knew an appeal was in process and the weekend was looming ahead, and nothing really would have been operative until Monday anyway. Uh, if the Election Commission behaves that way, the same thing could happen there once again, I hope. Look, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't want to prejudge any of these electoral judgments. Hmm. But let me talk about democracy. Our Prime Minister has actually said to the G20 and in posters dotting uh, capital city of New Delhi, that India is the mother of democracy. Is this the way that a mother would, uh, would behave towards its own child? It seems to me that this is a brazen assault on democracy, and it hurts me as an Indian Democrat. Uh, I have certainly uh, spoken with utmost respect uh, of my political opponents throughout my 14 years in politics, and I intend to continue doing that. Mm -hmm. To my mind, uh, when I saw that video of uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee speaking of how uh, Jawaharlal Nehru had treated him, when, even though he was a ferocious opponent of the Prime Minister, and actually told him, young man, you will be Prime Minister one day, or how Rajiv Gandhi had included him in a delegation to the United Nations General Assembly in New York, just so he could avail of some medical treatment, which in those days was not available in India. That, to my mind, was the kind of mutual respect that characterized our democracy. And that was the kind of way in which our, the conventions and practices of our democracy function. Mm. To see a democracy now where the government blatantly gloats over a, its principal opponent being locked up and disqualified is a very, very sad fall. Mm. And I think many Indians who don't support the Congress party or don't support Rahul Gandhi will agree with me that we expect better of our democracy. And that's why this Samvidhan Bachao Satyagraha is going on today. We are conducting a Satyagraha precisely because these values must not be lost. They're yes. far more important values than any individual politician, any individual leader, or frankly, any individual prime minister. Lastly, Mr. Tharoor, you say that this um, has backfired on the BJP, and at the moment the opposition seems to be standing besides Rahul Gandhi. But the fact is they are suspicious of the Congress Party's projections of Rahul Gandhi as PM, uh, the the. The opposition, though they need to stand together, is unable to do so because of the candidate of Rahul Gandhi as PM. How are you planning to no. overcome that? I'm sorry, Sarah, that's an inference. That's not a statement. The Congress Party has at no point declared a prime ministerial candidate. And I would like to see the slightest evidence of that from any statement by any responsible person in the Congress Party. The Congress Party has always said, whether it involves chief ministers and states or prime ministers of the center, that we'll come to that decision after the election is over. But the case for opposition unity is that last time BJP won with 37% of the vote. In 2014, it won with 31% of the vote. So the majority of voters did not vote for the BJP. Why don't we, instead of seeing that majority being divided 36 ways, because there are 36 parties in Parliament today, why don't we try and get all those parties on one platform to ensure that that majority actually gives you a majority but of seats? In one platform under whom? 
who will lead that yeah. platform? Because there are many I contenders for the post and they are unwilling to let the Congress continue to uh, hold that leadership position. Look, Sarah, in my own personal view, and remember, I'm not a party spokesman. I'm speaking as an individual MP. I think that's a matter that can be negotiated. I genuinely believe that all the parties can get together and find a convener uh, of this gathering who is not the, the boss of the gathering, but a convener of it, uh, pulling people together for the purposes of coordination. But that in this kind of opposition unity where you're talking about multiple parties, there'll have to be a lot of bargaining, a lot of give and take. And I don't think that any one party should insist on any God-given right uh, uh, to, to, to lead that process. It has to be a collegial one and a collective one. But I'm just a private MP. I have no role in the leadership of the Congress party, as you well know. And therefore, I don't speak with any party authority. Don't question others in the Congress about my views. This is just my view since you asked the question. In my view, this can be worked out. All right. Thank you so much, Shashi Tharoor, for joining us on Left, Right and Center. Let's get in Shahzad uh, Poonawala, national spokesperson of uh, the BJP, joining us now. Thank you for joining us on Left, Right and Center, Shahzad Poonawala. A self-goal, says Shashi Tharoor, because there's a newfound dynamics in the opposition, thanks to the BJP, he says, because of the Adani Rao and Rahul Gandhi's conviction, the opposition has come closer. Shashi Tharoor says this is unprecedented, the unity uh, that we're seeing in the opposition today. Has this backfired? Sarah, now I'm inclined to think that was this all conspired rather than backfired? Perhaps this is what Ravi Shankar Prasad had referred to in his press conference as Nakhun Katakar Shahid Banjana. You cut your nail and then you say you're a martyr of a cause that isn't. So was this actually, because look at the series of events. In a case of, a, of one of their spokespersons, Mr. Pawan Kheda, the legal team of the Congress party reaches the Supreme Court within hours. But here, where they very well knew that these uh, cases are lingering on for years, they had plenty of opportunity to appeal, they had plenty of opportunity to apologize or to uh, correct the statement or clarify the statement of Rahul Gandhi, which they've done in the past as far as Supreme Court is concerned. None of that is done. And then just before the Karnataka elections, this is uh, allowed to play out in the way they have allowed it. So either it could be a sabotage and Mr. Gandhi should then figure out from his legal team whether they were sabotaging him or perhaps... It was, as Mr. Shashi Tharoor just said, that uh, all being done so that a silver lining could be taken out from this dark cloud of conviction. Either so, way, uh, I don't think that I am uh, at the liberty like Mr. Tharoor, even though uh, his English must be much be better, to uh, impute motives to the courts. The court has finally convicted Mr. Rahul Gandhi. And the so way let the law me ask is, you the question again, Shahzad Punawala. Mm -hmm. Have you been played? Because the opposition is now slamming the government on Rajiv Gandhi's disqualification. Has the BJP made it easier for the opposition parties to find common cause? Because first you had the opposition that was chafing against working under the leadership of Rahul Gandhi. Now technically, whether this goes to court or not, and whatever the court, if there's an appeal, what the court's verdict is, technically he's out. So there's, uh, that is no longer something that can divide the opposition. You know, sometimes uh, there's another phrase, uh, you try to dig a hole for somebody else and you fall into it yourself. And perhaps that could have also happened because what is going to be the plank of opposition unity that Rahul Gandhi has made a statement, which many people legitimately perceive as a statement made against the OBC community. The Modi community belongs to the Ghanchi Samaj, which is categorized as OBCs in Gujarat and in other parts of the country. Or secondly, let me ask you, yesterday, if you've heard the statements of Mr. Akhilesh Yadav, or the statements of some other regional parties, they have in fact said to the Congress very clearly that look, the Congress should no longer be assuming leadership position. So for uh, all I can say is that this relationship lasted nothing more than a day. It was a one day stand at best and at best of friends with benefits kind of equation where after a day of showing solidarity. The but what Shashi Tharoor is saying is now they're back. And the glue is uh, the action taken by the BJP. Let me ask you another question. You were talking about how the Congress hasn't acted immediately and taken up the option of a uh, legal appeal. The court had granted Rahul Gandhi bail. They had suspended the sentence for 30 days to allow him to appeal to a higher court. But even before any appeal could be filed, Rahul Gandhi has found himself disqualified as a member of parliament uh, from uh, uh, Vayanad. Is this not, as the opposition is, has been making the charge, that... 
the BJP, the government continues to try and shrink the opposition space. Ironically, they say, saying this is due process of the law. Sarah, if you uh, go back to the Lily Thomas case of 2013, and I have a copy of that judgment, it's very clear that on conviction for two years and above, there is an automatic disqualification. I can read out that relevant paragraph for you. And therefore, there is no discretion left in the matter with the speaker. In fact, uh, Mr. Kapil Sibyl spoke to Mega Prasad, your colleague, and he clarified that the moment a person is convicted, even if there is a pending appeal, and by the way, the sentencing has been suspended, not the conviction. So the sentencing was suspended so that he could uh, file an appeal and uh, get bail, yes. which is his legitimate right. But as long as the conviction is not stayed or as long as the conviction is not overturned, which is another proceeding, uh, there is no scope for Mr. Rahul Gandhi to take the plea that he should not be disqualified. The speaker what at the best opposition is, only... is saying they are pointing to the alacrity, the speed uh, with which the administration, uh, the parliament administration worked in. Uh, removing him from his post, right? They are comparing this, uh, they're saying this is a blatant attempt to silence the opposition because they're comparing this to the treatment given to the suspended Lakshwadeep MP who is waiting to be reinstated. But in that case, you have the Lok Sabha Secretariat dragging its feet on withdrawing his disqualification. But it's complete different treatment, they say, for Rahul Gandhi. Oh, well, you know, let me again uh, reiterate that Lily Thomas makes it absolutely clear that it's not the discretion of the speaker to disqualify anybody. He at best plays the role or she at best plays the role of notifying a fate to comply. And therefore, there have been more than 32 people, at least I can remember of, including six uh, legislators of the BJP who have immediately lost their membership yes. and stood disqualified. So whether the speaker notifies it on day one or day 10, it doesn't really make difference to the factum of the fact that he, the, the member is disqualified as of the next millisecond that he's convicted. So they stand in the same legal position, Lalu Prasad Yadav, Rashid Masood, Abdullah Azam Khan, Rahul Gandhi. All of them got disqualified the very next millisecond that they were convicted. Now, I just have a counter question to pose. Uh, if the Congress party felt that this was such a matter of tearing urgency and they knew that the conviction came on, uh, on a day at two o'clock, then what were they waiting for to not file an appeal even today? I mean, as last known... Uh, I think you answered that in the beginning, appeal. as you're saying, yeah. maybe this is a narrative they're trying to spill, uh, spin, they're taking moral high ground. So that brings us back to the question, has the BJP been played? Is this a self-goal? I want to lastly just ask you the, what the opposition is raising, what uh, the Congress is pointing out is that you have a sitting MP not allowed to speak in Parliament. And that is all that he has said in, in uh, London is that he wants to speak in Parliament. A uh, sitting MP disqualified without a chance to appeal. What does this say about Democrat? institutions because at the same time we have uh, ADR showed in the last uh, 2019 elections 39 percent of uh, the BJP legislators 116 BJP legislators had criminal charges against them uh, so let me separate that in two parts firstly uh, I've been in the Congress as you know and now I'm in the BJP and I can tell you there are more votaries of Rahul Gandhi speaking in the BJP than in the Congress I'm sure that many of my colleagues who have not left the Congress continue to fear God when Rahul Gandhi pro says that he's going to speak like he did in the press conference. But on a more serious note, ways. these are serious issues that have to be raised in Parliament. It's only being raised now outside. It has to be raised in England. Now, now let me come to that. Now, uh, on that point, uh, he spoke uh, in the first part of the budget session. There was no mics that were being shut off. He spoke at length. He has been speaking at length on media channels. He's been covered extensively by the press. And absolutely, there is a Supreme Court probe going on on the issue that he keeps raising. Now, it was Mr. Kharge on 2nd February who said that we either want a Supreme Court probe or a JPC probe. This is on record. You can check the statement of Mr. Kharge given to PTI and to other news agencies. And now when a Supreme Court probe has been ordered, do they not trust the Supreme Court? And let's assume that he has all the facts on this particular issue of Mr. Adani. I think it's uh, obnoxious that he keeps blaming and defaming a businessman who has not been uh, found guilty of anything as of now. But having said that, if that is true, why hasn't he cancelled the projects in Rajasthan or in Chhattisgarh? And finally, as far as parliamentary and other institutions are concerned, at least Rahul Gandhi should look at his own family's history. The only time emergency was imposed, censorship was imposed, journalists were blocked, Supreme Court was taken for a ride and parliament was made Pangu or a puppet was at the time of his grandmother. So I think Rahul Gandhi should look at what he has said. He has said in uh, foreign soil that he wants is, will history repeat 
itself. I think that's what the Congress is, is uh, banking on because what we saw the tide turned after Indira Gandhi spent I think it was six days in jail then. Thanks so much anyway but the question right now is do we have a powerful government with a large mandate but with disturbingly thin skin and a willingness to use any means thinly disguised as legal process to bludgeon the opposition. That is a charge being made by the opposition. How will this play out? That's a million dollar question but for now Thank you for joining us on Left, Right and Centre.